Brooke and I'm the driver of the number 67 Lamborghini Scuderia Corsa Super Trofeo Series. I'm driving for Bubba Burger, Lucas Oil, Cool Shirt Systems, and MBRP Exhaust Systems. I've been racing for a decade. I like to say a decade versus 10 years because it makes me sound like I'm seasoned. Um, but my start, I kind of an uh, unconventional start. Um, most racing drivers, it's like a grandfather, father, son thing. Um, Whereas I grew up in a military family, um, my dad and I were competitive water skiers growing up at a young age and started with me, so I've always considered myself to be a hardcore athlete. And uh, did a NASCAR experience when I was 16 years old, and that's what you know got the adrenaline going even more so than it already was. Um, but I didn't have any knowledge of like the industry or the sport. Um, I didn't know what it took. I knew who Jeff Gordon was, and I knew what NASCAR racing was, and that was the extent of my knowledge. So. In my perspective, I feel I feel like I came in oh, like six feet under. Like really, I had a really hard time initially, but I never felt like I had a hard time because I was so, you know, balls to the wall, like go as hard as I can, um, meet as many people, integrate myself into the industry that I became so passionate about. And uh, my parents were a huge, you know, they're, they're still huge supporters of mine. And, um, you know, dad had to sell some stuff to, to get our first, you know, race car and I started professional racing in 2010 in Pirelli World Challenge. Um, was a Honda girl through and through, still am at heart, and uh, did about seven consecutive seasons in Pirelli World Challenge in the Touring Car Divisions. Uh, seven time Pirelli World Challenge uh, Honda winner in the categories and uh, still yet to win a championship. Uh, transitioned over to the Super Trofeo paddock actually last year and uh, end of 2017 where I did two races, uh, finished uh, fifth, excuse me, fourth place in both and um, ended up signing on for a full full deal, so full swing. Everything I've been working for for 10 years has really kind of come into effect um, this year in the Super Trofeo paddock. Uh, it's kind of a, it's an interesting, like, like I'm really proud of where we've come because and where we are now because this is like like this car behind me is a 10 years 10 year in the making process um, it took me a while to, to get to where we are but the reason being is because I mean let's just shoot it straight like I didn't come from an affluent background um, I didn't have the knowledge uh, I had zero race craft I, I had zero engineering sense um, you know fear was never an, an option for me because I've just been a pretty fearless person. I've always believed that, you know, if you can, you know, see it, dream it, believe it, um, try it, you can achieve it. And uh, I think that we're in our program is a testament to it being possible. Um, but it's only possible with the right people. And that's why it took us so long. <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, myself, my partners like Bubba Burger. Bubba Burger has been such a huge supporter because um, for one, it started with, I, I'm, a, I'm a consumer. I eat the burgers myself. And um, when I found out that this company was in Jacksonville, Florida, my hometown, um, has a sister company, Peter Brook Chocolate, which I love, which girl doesn't love chocolate? Uh, and what the brand represented and it being such a family orientated brand, like I feel like I'm the girl next door and I want to be on the box, right? So I called him up, cold called him for years and years and years and finally got him to say yes in a big way. Lucas Oil um, has been keeping my cars in tip top shape tuning wise for seven years now and um, all American brand, um, one that I'm really proud to be a part of and uh, have won several races because of them. Uh, cool Shirt Systems keeps me nice and cool because for one, it's really hot in the car and two, every once in a while you get a little hot headed. <laughs> driver Mark Barkey this year who is just a freaking stellar guy um, he brought an MBRP exhaust system which is just a nationwide um, actually worldwide product um, with the exhaust systems and um, you know those are the primary entities that really like made it possible but who made it happen um, I got married last year in November and I've been with my longtime now husband for nine years um, Nick has been my rock for the past nine years and really made this program come together on the business end. Um, I have a business partner, KK, who who has tremendously helped us get to where we are today. Um, and then, you know, what's kind of 
like what's really interesting is we just we swept the podium in race one here at Mid Ohio, and we did really like I had some teammates um, in other categories that were swept the podium again. We finished fourth, and we kind of we really showed up. We freaking showed up at the first race weekend in a really great way with a brand new team, Precision Performance Motorsports. Um, and there's some roundy round guys. There are actually some NASCAR guys, and it turns out they know how to go right and left. Um, and you know, there's a lot of new people underneath the tent, so the synergy it was always there. It was just the process of things and trying to to get it to the point where we knew we could be successful. Tiger Woods has a coach. Um, Lindsey Vaughn has a coach. Uh, Michael Schumacher has a coach. Um, every high-level athlete. Even though they're the even though they're the best in the world um, or in their division, to be to stay to become the best and to be the best, you you got to have the right people. Um, and in motorsports, it's a couple people. It's the best um, car chief. It's the best engineer. It's the best um, mechanic. It's the best coach. It's the best teammate. Uh, there's a lot of scenarios that have to come together for you to have the success. And um, I've been very fortunate to have met some pretty amazing people along the way. My first coach was Michael Miller. Um, Michael was every bit of what I needed to accelerate my driving expertise, um, even when I was younger. Um, and not, and it was how he coached me. It was how he asked. Instead of giving me the answer a lot of the times, he asked me the questions so that I could find the answer on my own. And that was a really big like learning experience for me because I didn't have the knowledge. But Mike was also, he became a mental coach for me. Um, not just a, a data coach, a video coach, a go fast guy. He became such a great friend in helping me mentally through things. Because I think what a lot of times people also don't quite understand is, you know, we might have a smile on or I might have a smile on all the time. Actually, if I don't have a smile on, people think I'm like pissed off and that's not the case. I'm just relaxing my face for a second. But um, he helped me in, in a way that allowed me to completely be turned on when I needed to be turned on in the moment and to attack and to do my job and execute well so that we can get the performances because the performances are what matter most because without the performance you don't get the result. So stop fixating on the result. He taught me that mentally and how to, it's so hard for athletes and racing drivers in particular to have these different turn on switches. You know, a qualifying turn on switch. A, you know, you're opening up the race, you're taking the green flag, um, you gotta, you know, drive hard, get to the front, um, or stay to the front, uh, but you gotta conserve tires for your co driver for the driver rotation, for the driver change. Um, if you're the second driver in, you gotta know that you might be getting into <laughs> great equipment. Um, maybe the co driver didn't take care of the equipment too well. Um, you know, the car, even though the car's warmed up and ready to go and execute, it, it might not be, you know, a 10 tenths race car. It could be an 8 tenths race car. Uh, and you've got to be able to jump in and, and keep it together and uh, ex especially keep it in one piece so that you can get those performances. And that mental drive is, is exhausting, um, pun intended, because of the MBRP exhaust. But, uh, they, it, it's, it's not an easy thing to, to captivate, and it's not an easy thing to learn. Um, I would say the mental aspect is actually probably the, the hardest of it all. I mean, you've got the coaches, you've got raw data from the car. Um, depending on the car, you might have telemetry. You've got the best mechanics, you've got the best equipment. I mean, you got a freaking Lamborghini. Um, you, you have all these things that are tangible. What's not tangible is your mental state, your attitude. And there's times, there's times where I'm on track and I know that I just like screwed a corner. And uh, instead of, instead of consistently thinking about that one corner and how I'm gonna perfect that one corner, you almost just have to hit the reset button, which is really hard to do when you're halfway through the track and you're not hitting start finish. It's really hard to reset right then and there because a lot of times people have this like tendency where it's like, oh, I screwed up one corner, I'm gonna make it all up in the next. You don't have to do that. All you have to be is one tenth quicker and maybe three corners to make up for the three tenths that you screwed the pooch. Um, and it, it's, it's, you get this like redness, this tunnel vision. And uh, frankly, I had it in qualifying um, a couple days ago and it didn't go very well for me. So in the races though, I was really able to be calm collected, remember to breathe. Um, here this weekend, I've got a, I'm working with somebody named Alex Figgy, and Alex was a 
champ car driver, Indy car driver, um, drove for Volvo, McLaren, um, and GT stuff. Just an, an overall really cool guy with an amazing background, stupid fast. Also wrecked a bunch of stuff because he was stupid fast. Um, but Alex is like semi-retired and he makes a, a living driver coaching. And Alex and I have been friends for some time and when I announced that I was doing the Lamborghini program, um, Alex reached out and we hadn't talked in a little while. And um, it just, you know, we've always been such close friends. And I said, you know, Alex, would you, would you help me? Would you help me maybe this year? I mean, I, I really, I need some, I just feel like he was so excited for me. He was so ex so excited about the program that I just, I'm like, that's the guy. That's the guy that will get Martin and I the championship that we want. He's the guy that's gonna help us. We showed up this race weekend with a lot of unknowns and expectations that we know are achievable, um, but we had to overcome some stuff. Um, we had to get our confidence up. Uh, we needed to, to prove to ourselves that our, our technique in the race car is good, um, but it's not good enough. And Alex has been that guy, and he's absolutely hilarious. He's, he's kind of like the, the whole like angel devil thing. Alex can be a little bit of that for me and maybe Martin because he is he pumps you up but at the same time he lets you know when you're not doing that good because you got to know you have to know what it, I, I got to know something even if it hurts my feelings because you can't have your feelings in this whole game you get your feelings and your emotions all tied up into this crap you might as well not show up at the racetrack um, because that's when things go really south. And that's when accidents happen on racetracks. That's when you wreck a car. That's when you hurt yourself. That's when you hurt somebody else. Because the reality is, is you don't really realize what a bull this car is until something goes wrong. And this is this weekend, this is one of the fastest race cars here on the racetrack. You don't want to get hurt this thing. Because it's, there's there's a risk factor. I mean, you gotta you got to evaluate some risk-reward. Um, I never look at, I never really focus on the back, because actually just a couple days ago, a friend gave me some advice that does like a lot of our like media marketing for us, um, Dave Green, they, they work at Always Evolving, um, sent me a video and it's about like when things when shit hits the man, when things go bad. Um, it's actually you gotta think it's good. Like it, when things are going bad, that's good because that gives you an opportunity to be better. That gives you an opportunity to like step back, reevaluate, re-execute, reload, recharge. Um, and I've taken that advice and I've taken that motto kind of into this race weekend. And ironically, it was like the exact advice that I needed from a buddy that is helping represent me, my partners, the team, all of what we're doing. Um, so, you know, it, it's just, it, it's interesting to see, like, it's interesting to kind of think about, like, the risk, the risk reward because there's a lot of risk in what we do, um, but it's worth the reward and you just have to evaluate whether or not it's it's never a it, you don't wake up in the morning and say I don't freaking care what it takes I'm gonna go ahead and do it because in motor racing it's every tenth you are evaluating risk reward risk reward risk reward and it's freaking draining it's so mentally draining it's physically draining it's it's not just me but it's the team it's the engineers it's um, you know making decisions on the fly and you pray to God that your strategy works out and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I would like to think that I'm kind of, I'm a very, I take this very seriously and um, because this is, this is my career, this is what I want to continue doing, um, I, but at the same time, you got to have, you got to look at you, you know, you, you got to relax, you got to realize that we're all really blessed and fortunate people, I mean, I'm driving a freaking Lamborghini and Super Trofeo at the MSA, in the MSA paddock, um, with some of the, the best competing against some of the best teams on the continent. And uh, you gotta really, you gotta like take it all in. Like you gotta, have, you gotta like, allow yourself to have a moment to realize how lucky you are. But it's not. I don't. I say lucky, but I actually don't believe in luck. I think luck is a bunch of bullshit. Um, I think you make your luck. 
because it's all opportunity based. Yeah. I think a lot of people were really surprised about our initiative this year. I mean, we rolled out, I was driving, you know, in touring car and Honda Civics, um, which I absolutely, you know, love and, and miss a little bit, um, but I've been trying so hard to get to this GT platform with, you know, this series, um, with this team, you know, with this group, that you, you, you kind of, you got to remember that you you got to put yourself in those positions. Like doors aren't just going to open. Like opportunities don't just pop up. You got to make the opportunity. And that's the advice that I've always given people: is do not just think that it's going to happen. You got to go make it happen. But the only way you're going to make it happen, and honestly, this is also this is what I I did probably incorrectly for a while. I was a one woman show. I'm like nobody can do it better than me. I'm a control freak. Um, I'm just gonna I, I, I'm. I'm going to do it because I'm not going to be happy with the result that I get from somebody else. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I made early on because there are amazing people that you need to connect yourself with and it takes some time to kind of lead the process. I mean, I used to have, I like to think that I've got a lot of friends and I love people and I love interacting. Um, I love everybody from like our fans, which I think is a really weird word because I don't really call them fans. They're more like our friends. Um, as you can see, like this weekend, there's people, like you think I'm hugging fans. I'm like, they're friends. I see them every year here. Like I know their names. Um, you got to remember that these are the people that have built you up and you want to surround yourself around uh, good people, quality people. I used to think of it like this, like I've got this huge, you know, like network. I found out in, in a not so great way last year that you have, you need to reduce you need to your network doesn't really need to be a hundred thousand people. Um, your network could be ten. Ten core people that you, you really trust because and it's not about you, it's about the overall goal and like making sure that we get to that overall goal. Um, I definitely use humor to calm me down to just kind of chill and relax. Uh, you just got to be a little bit light every once in a while because this is such a serious environment. Uh, I love I love cracking jokes. More importantly, I love hearing people crack jokes. It's not really about, I have terrible jokes, so I don't have any. Um, but I do like that light personality. Uh, it just kind of makes everything a little bit easier throughout the day, especially when you're having a rough day, like racing fear, because, so qualifying is 10 tenths, falls to the wall. Um, you gotta be switched on from the moment you get in the car, and sometimes the, the tires, and if you're starting qualifying, the tires are cold, the brakes are cold, your brain's cold, everything's cold. To get everything up to temperature so that you can get to 10 tenths is not an easy thing to accomplish, so your fear factor in qualifying is out of 10. Um, your, your race fear, though, is always changing because when the green flag uh, drops, you've got anywhere between 20, 25, 30 cars um, around you, um, depending on where you are. Hopefully you're closer up to the front and everybody's behind you. Um, or maybe you have to work through some traffic. So you've got to kind of evaluate things over the course of the first lap. Um, I would say that your, your fear level of just the unknown um, can be pretty intense that first lap or two and then as the, the race progresses people start to kind of find their packs and who they're kind of you know competing against that fear factor starts to drop a little bit um, although you know for me like in race two today uh, I you know we had, I jumped in the car after Martin Martin gave me a fantastic car the fear factor was like minimal because the car was just awesome I mean I could just drive the car 10 tenths and know that it, I was solid um, when I saw all of a sudden that I was catching third in a big way, I got real excited. And I want to use, I want to almost say that the excitement was a positive fear because it got me amped up again and I had a carrot to chase. Because I was driving so hard, I mean, I had the car crossed up. I had the car sideways in areas where I was like, oh my God, I got to be careful on exit because we can't follow this race car. So, you know, I, I, it, 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 it evaluates. Um, you have to evaluate it constantly. And sometimes, or more ideally, you want to hit this reset button when you're starting um, uh, crossing over start finish. But sometimes you don't have that luxury, right? You can't wait seven corners to hit the reset to get to start finish because that's the ideal position on track to just say, okay, let me, I got a lap time, 
maybe it wasn't very good, let's clock off another good one. Sometimes you have to make it up when you're at corner three of a 20 corner, you know, course. It's not an easy thing to do and it's, it's um, not very, it's not very easily taught. It's an experience thing. You gotta have the experience, you gotta have the race craft, you gotta have time in the seat, you gotta have years of experience, you gotta have um, different experience driving and some different kinds of drivers, not just the same drivers. It is, and it does, a lot of it's visual. Um, a ton of everything is visual in this sport. I mean, you know whether or not you have turned in too late, dragged the brakes a little bit too long so you couldn't turn the car. Maybe you cracked the throttle a little too soon and now you've induced this understeer. Think about um, entry, mid-corner, exit, and then again, entry, mid-corner, exit, and then again, entry, mid-corner, exit. And um, sometimes the reset button could be on entry, sometimes it could be mid-corner, so it could be on exit. Sometimes you just say, I screwed up two corners, now I know that all I have to do is, instead of making it all up at the next one in the break zone, which is never a good idea, um, take the next four corners and just click off another tenth, then a tenth, then a tenth, to try and get that lap time back up. But there's also a time where you don't, the reset button is a hard reset, okay? You're, you're, it's a hard reset. You have, you are overdriving, you are not in the right mental set, you've got red mist, maybe another driver's pissing you off on track, um, maybe you're not, just for whatever reason, things aren't with it. Uh, you're not with it. And a hard reset for me is put your head down, almost forget everything. Um, like, there's been times where I've disconnected my radio. Because I, which is never really a good thing because you need the information, but sometimes, like, I've done it twice where it's just, i got to get my act together. And the only way I could do that is just be in my car in the moment and have the car be an extension of me because the car's not feeling like it's an extension of me. That's a hard reset. Pride, tearing out my soul. I beg for this. Ask me twice. I